SMT Nation, we are back. Nation, in today's video, I want to give you guys some really important information. I want to make sure that you guys have an accurate depiction of what's going on with the at and network. And it's, it's going to be a work in progress for a while in a lot of places. So I want to give you those realistic expectations. I want to explain what's going to be happening. And I want you to just have a, a, a real true-to-life set of expectations. All right, so what's currently going on with at and is they're they're upgrading their network their wireless network and in the process they're also upgrading their wireline network and their transport and when it comes to fiber circuits trying to go higher capacity right 10 gig trying to be the standard you know and and that's the type of thing that's needed in 5g networking right high capacity fiber to the cell sites now pictured in the background and this is a video that i filmed edited and published several months ago uh, probably about three months ago. And this is a brand new AT&T tower site. It was built from scratch by Tower Company LLC. And AT&T for now is the only carrier on there. It is a difference-making connection now for AT&T. They're literally the best in this region because of that tower. Uh, you'll see some testing on the initial uh, speed testing and, and, and stuff like that. I'll just keep it running in the background. But... This is what it's going to be for AT&T. It's going to be new tower sites that need to be built, uh, built for the densification process. It's the conversion of going from, you know, Nokia in many markets to Ericsson. And, you know, with that move, right, they're going Oran. Uh, you get improved range. You're improving the accessibility. You know, things like latency and jitter are showing great improvements. But then there's like the technical aspect. And this is where things are kind of coming to a T here in this video. It's cost. AT&T is under a lot of pressure financially to move away from old gear Nokia, like old tower sites that need to be modernized, that haven't been touched in years. And they don't even have N77. They don't have DOD or C-band or any of that stuff. They're going to move to Ericsson nationwide. So those old tower sites are going to be the primary focus, the first ones to get upgraded. And then also after that's kind of been happening, we're seeing new Nokia getting changed to new Ericsson, right? Nokia sites that were just built or modernized like in the last year or two. And that involves a lot of cost. You know, um, there's a major sacrifice coming. It is without a doubt going to happen and going to occur. AT&T is going to be reducing, sacrificing the number of new tower builds that are going to be going into the network. You're going to see a decrease in that plan right so let's say a, a, a certain region engineering region for AT&T was slated to receive 500 new tower builds right let's say it's spanning over many many states they might be reducing that number by a very large portion you know maybe something like a third or half of the sites will not get built anymore so the permits that went in for them are likely to expire uh, the plans for those builds are basically canceled, put on ice, and they'll probably even just wait to replan it several years from now, you know, and, and that's going to be the limitation. The limitation is budgeting. You know, this is going to slow down new coverage. This is going to slow down capacity builds, right? Kind of some of that, you know, taking care of gaps in between sites. The densification efforts, the mid-band rollout is going to kind of be different now, if you think about it, right? 3.45 gigahertz gear. 3.7 gigahertz gear. Potentially 4.9 gigahertz gear. Do you guys see all the complications with the AT&T network? Do you guys see where things have been going? It makes the other providers look to be doing things much better, right? Like, Verizon's not playing cute. It's C-band and that's in bust, right? T-Mobile's not playing around. It's N41 or bust. You know what I'm saying? So AT&T will probably going to be heavily politicking their way through this whole like three gigahertz thing. Yeah, see, you get a T-Mobile ad while you're running your AT&T. <laughs> right? So you got all this going on. Um, AT&T is going to be politicking their way through government. They're going to be negotiating heavily with with eight, uh, Ericsson to try to get the best deals. They're still trying to build a 10 gig fiber circuit standard across their footprint. 
AI is going to be dictating everything they do in tower decisions, right? at and is doing a major overhaul here, folks. It, this is a multi-stage, multi-year process. And even with a $22 billion CapEx, at and will not be able to really accelerate anything. You know, this is a human time frame. You know, it's not like we could just snap our fingers and boom, everything's got N77 and everything's got Ericsson and everything's done. So we've got confirmation internally at at and my sources indicate all these things. And to set the record straight, compared to their competition, T-Mobile's not having these issues. Verizon's not having these issues. They had very clear plans and direction to what they were doing with their network. They started with it. They're going to finish with it. AT&T has changed their way on multiple occasions going with Ericsson, going Oran, you know, changing up from Nokia, putting up gear and then coming back and focusing on fiber and all this. I'm not here to tell a business how to be run. I mean, that's John Stanky's job. He's the CEO of AT&T. But now you guys are kind of seeing what is involved in all of this. You're going to see new site build reductions across the entire country for AT&T, making them less competitive with both Verizon and T-Mobile. Yes, even with T-Mobile. T-Mobile does not have any restrictions outside of the fact that maybe their CapEx is, is lower than someone may like, but they have a clear direction they're going. Verizon has a clear direction they're going. Frontier, N77, C-Band, CBRS, everything head down you're working nothing cute no additional frequencies keep it simple stupid stupid simple and and they're just making it happen don't get me wrong guys the ericsson thing was a good decision relative to performance but it made life very complicated for at&t when they decided to go in this direction because they didn't go in this direction from the beginning and maybe this is the best thing they could have did but they made the decision, and these are the complications that come with it. Set your expectations to be realistic. This AT&T 5G Plus N77 Ericsson from Nokia and Fiber, this is a multi-year process, and I don't care how, how much money they throw at this project. They can keep that CapEx over $20 billion for the next five years. They will not be done. There will always be more work to do, and that's just par for the industry. But specifically, AT&T has put themselves in this position, and they're going to have to work through this. And it's complicated. And you wonder why they keep the squeaky wheel going, scraping and scrounging for any type of handout. It's because of stuff like this. These are decisions that they've made. You made your bed, now sleep, I guess. Anyways. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the commentary to the video and enjoyed some of the testing on that AT&T Ericsson site, that zero build brand new tower. It's a shame we're going to be seeing less of these coming up. Hopefully they pick things up here in the next couple of years after they finish this whole Ericsson thing. But we'll see what happens and we'll see how it plays out. What do you guys think about all this? What's your take? Drop me a line and a comment down in the comment section below. You all the voice of the people, the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard.